Maya Millet is a wife and mother who lives in Chula Vista, California, and at the time of making this video, has been missing for almost four months. Her family last saw her at home on January 7, 2021, at around 5 p.m. Earlier that day, she filled out a consultation form to schedule an appointment with a divorce attorney. By 1 a.m. on January 8th, the Chula Vista Police Department had already launched a missing persons investigation for Maya. Her husband, Larry, was the last known person to have seen Maya before she went missing. Maya's car was located at her home and her phone was turned off at the time of its discovery. Maya Millet's family paints her as a caring mother who would have never willingly left her kids. The Chula Vista Police Department say they've interviewed more than four dozen people, including family members, friends, neighbors, and witnesses who potentially had insight into her whereabouts. The department also served 12 search warrants in order to search homes, vehicles, cell phones, spending records, and social media profiles. While missing, her husband Larry stayed at home with their children and did not attend any of the community-led searches or vigils for Maya. Although the police have publicly cleared her husband as a suspect, some newly revealed details and circumstances continue to mount against him. Shortly before her disappearance, according to one of Maya's family members, Maya uttered the disconcerting words, if anything happens to me, it would be Larry. And the mother of three reportedly argued with her husband the same day that she went missing, as she mentioned it when she spoke with friends in a video call around 5.30 p.m. that same evening. And that was the last time anyone ever heard from Maya Millet. And the most suspicious detail in her disappearance is the fact that the same day that Maya scheduled an appointment to meet with a divorce attorney is the last day that anybody saw her. Another witness claims to have heard Larry discussing paying someone $20,000 to kill Maya's alleged boyfriend. Larry staunchly believed that Maya was having an affair with a co-worker, even though there was no physical evidence of the infidelity. Maya's family said that the Chula Vista Police Department had been keeping them at an arm's length distance, rarely sharing any details with them about the investigation. And most of the information they've uncovered comes from their defense attorney who has been working independently to find Maya. Their lawyer, named Billy Little, commented that if Maya is found, he can almost guarantee that she won't be found alive. Defense attorney Little began investigating days after Maya's disappearance. The family asked me, uh, the family approached me um, when Maya went missing and nobody had heard from her. Uh, she went missing on the 7th. The family contacted me, I believe, on the 9th after she had been gone a day and a half or so, asked me if I could assist in finding May or Maya. I'll just call her May. Little knocked on the door of the Millet home four days after Maya went missing. Her husband Larry opened the door and let Little in after he showed him his identification. So it was the 11th of January of 2021. Uh, I went over there. I'm not sure if Larry, the husband, was going to open the door, was going to talk to me. Uh, I just went up, knocked on the door, uh, told him who I was. He invited me in the house. Little immediately noticed that the windows were all open, the fans on full blast, and the house being abnormally chilly. There was absolutely no detectable smell of anything, no bleach, no cleaning materials, nor bodily decomposition. I went in the house, I immediately noticed the windows all open, the fans on full blast. It was chilly in the house. It was obvious that the house had been cleaned, all the windows were open, the fans were on full blast, other than the fact that he was obviously airing the house out. And when Little went into their bedroom, he noticed a hole, probably 10 inches wide by about 6 to 8 inches tall, rectangular shaped by the door that had freshly been patched up. Went up to the bedroom where she had been locking herself in for the past several days uh, to ostensibly get away from Larry. Little says that bedroom had a lock and had been recently repaired. There were holes in the walls and then there was a freshly repaired hole right next to the doorknob. Uh, when I went to the bedroom, I immediately noticed a hole probably uh, 10 inches long by about uh, six to eight inches tall, rectangular shape that had been freshly repaired. It was right by the handle. Um, there was a lock on the inside of the door. In other words, um, and this is just, let's say the door is locked. You wanted to break in the door, um, or get to the door. You could punch through that hole, reach through the other side and unlock the door from the other side. I touched the, um, repair material and notice that it was still damp. I said, hey, Larry, this is still wet. It's looked like you freshly uh, repaired this door. And he said, oh, no, that was a hole that May had punched in the door. So and I knew that that was untrue from other stories that I'd gotten about how the holes in the uh, 
house had come to be. And inside the garage, he discovered a freezer was missing from its fixed location. How did you know that there was a freezer missing when you did that uh, walkthrough? Again, I had been informed by other witnesses that I spoke to that there was an allegation that there was a freezer that had been taken out of the garage. Um, and that turned out to be true. I confirmed that uh, both at the house and when I uh, found the freezer. Also noted a freezer had been removed from the garage. He alerted police detectives. The freezer was later recovered at a relative's. On February 4, 2021, Larry Millett retained a lawyer and was no longer cooperating with the authorities in the investigation. Of course, Larry stopped doing media interviews and stopped uh, cooperating with the investigation early on in the case. The family of Maya is looking for a dead body. We're still waiting. For the past three months, Little has been collecting more and more evidence in the case, including audio footage and hundreds of text messages sent in 2020 by Maya's husband Larry to friends and family. And in the text of family members, Larry complains of Maya's supposed infidelity. He accuses his wife of having an affair and mentions going to her supervisor to force her male co-workers to be moved to a different department. All with absolutely no evidence that there was an actual affair going on. Other text messages contain biblical quotes about adulterous women. And one quote read, Her feet go down to death and her steps lead straight to the grave. The cryptic messages increase in frequency as Maya started moving more and more towards a divorce. Larry was desperate to reconcile their marriage in order to be compliant in the eyes of God and his family. Since Maya wanted a divorce from Larry, the blow to his ego and his staunch religious beliefs could have culminated enough of a motive for him to kill his wife. Divorce is still extremely controversial and prohibited in the Philippines, and in Filipino culture and in strict Catholicism, it's typically seen as a decision that must be avoided at all costs from their beliefs not a resolution like it is in American culture. Judging by his religious beliefs and conviction, I believe Larry wanted to go ahead and eradicate the problem or prospect of divorce by killing Maya, rather than going through the process to save himself the shame and embarrassment of having to explain to his family why Maya wanted a divorce from him. The most recent breakthrough in evidence comes about three weeks ago of what appeared to be eight gunshots fired the same night that Maya vanished. The sounds were part of home security footage collected from an anonymous neighbor, and they were originally thought to be loud bangs or various crashes, but when further analyzed, investigators speculate that the bangs were gunshots fired indoors. One piece of information that I knew going in was that he had asked someone to borrow gun cleaning equipment to clean his guns uh, on that weekend. So that seemed odd to me. When your wife is missing, you want to start cleaning your guns. I will enhance the audio now to make it as audible and bright as possible for you to use your own discretion. Enforcement agencies on the local and federal level are teaming up to investigate this case now. News aides Chris Groh joins us live in Chula Vista to explain more on this, as well as how the family is responding to all this. Chris? Yeah, and we actually heard from Maya's sister and brother-in-law who told us that essentially, look, this is still being called a search effort, a missing persons case, despite the fact that now the FBI and NCIS are now involved in this case. However, we did learn one big update yesterday from the Chula Vista Police Department. Those loud bangs that we have been playing for you in this story so far. Those that sound like gunshots, well, they are being analyzed by the Chula Vista Police Department to see if they are indeed gunshots. As the three-month anniversary of her disappearance came and went, police are still hopeful that they will be able to solve her disappearance and locate Maya. After nearly four months, Maya's family knows the chances of ever seeing her again are very slim, and Maya wanted to spend her 40th birthday with her family at the Grand Canyon, but instead her family will spend her birthday at Fiesta Island praying for the safe return of the mother of three.